Hey guys, in this video we're going to be drawing Russell Wilson. First we're going to start off with pencils, then ink the drawing, and then color it in with alcohol-based markers. So, as you may have heard the new news, uh, Russell Wilson is now a Denver Bronco. And he was uh, drafted by the Seattle Seahawks and played there for about 10 years. And then uh, they just recently traded him to the Broncos for <clears throat> a whole boatload of picks, a couple of first round picks, a couple of second round picks. Uh, I think three players, so quite a haul. Um, now, I'm a 49ers fan, so naturally I was very excited uh, to see this happen because that benefits the 49ers not having Russell Wilson in their division. So, uh, in honor of, uh, of Russell Wilson being a Denver Bronco now, I decided to draw him in a comic book style. And I've been saying a lot that I'm going to be redesigning the Washington Commanders jersey and I was planning on doing that video next. And uh, it's something that I've been in progress, but since Russell Wilson just got traded, I figured I kind of have to address this first. Um, but if you're interested in that uh, Washington Commanders uniform redesign, uh, sit tight. That video is coming soon, hopefully in about a week or less. And uh, that should be the next video that I post unless someone, some other big crazy trade happens. So stay tuned for that. So you can see here, I'm uh, first sketching out the drawing and doing a, a real loose sketch just to sort of lay out um, the pose on the page, make sure I can get everything into fit. So that's what I've got there. And of course, if you want to get uh, a t-shirt or a phone case or a poster with this image on it, just click the link in the description below. And uh, that's how you can help support this channel. And uh, help fund uh, these drawings while also getting uh, some pretty cool merch out of it. So definitely check that out if you're interested, if you're a Broncos fan or you like Russell Wilson. But as you can see here next, I'm getting into the inks. And basically after I've got everything sketched out, um, sort of doing, I've got a, um, a real thin pen here, uh, Micron, and I'm just doing the outline of everything. Just as, as few lines as possible, just to sort of get a quick outline of everything. And uh, this is just so I can transfer it, transfer it from pencils into inks. And then after that, I erase away all the pencil lines. And then all I'm left with is these real thin uh, marker lines after that. And then next I use a thicker marker to, uh, to thicken up some of these outlines. And I definitely am a big fan of real thick outlines. Um, that's kind of my style. Uh, it's not necessarily a style everyone uses, but I'm a big fan of it, so um, that's what I'm doing there. Next, I use a, uh, a medium thickness marker to sort of fill in uh, the gaps of, of just areas where I don't want an extra thick, bold outline. I just kind of want um, an outline that's, you know, not, not thin, but like I said, just kind of a medium thickness. And so I do that, you know, especially for things like the numbers around the jersey, um, things like that. that. Those are definitely good areas where you want kind of a medium thickness so that when you, you don't want to be too thin because when you color in, um, you don't want your, your marker to bleed through the lines. But you don't want to be too thick either because then it kind of um stands out too much and that's not necessarily what you're going for um and then i'm thickening up some of the outlines and with this style it really helps to um the thicker the outline the more emphasis uh, an area will have and a real thick outline can also basically create like a border to separate two areas that you really want um, some distinction between and then after that, I'm taking my marker and filling in a little bit of the areas where there's a dark shadow. Um, because I'm coloring this in, I don't want too many shadows. I don't want to go crazy, but just a few uh, in the areas just sort of show um, that there's, you know, some shadows going on there. And then lastly, I take the thinnest marker and add in a few of the little details, uh, little doodads here and there. And there again, I'm using the thinnest marker that I've got uh, because these are just little details that are less of an emphasis. So uh, like I said, the thickness of the marker determines the emphasis 
of, uh, of what you're drawing and it will basically draw your eye to it. So here's all the inks that are done. And then next we're gonna get into color. And I'm using uh, alcohol-based markers. Uh, these are CaliArt is the brand that I got on Amazon. And uh, when I was growing up as a kid, I don't know if these existed, but I definitely never used them. We just used the regular water-based markers. And, uh, but these alcohol-based markers, I've been using these for a couple of years now, and they are, they are just amazing. Um, Basically, what makes them so good is, first of all, you can uh, you can put them down on the page and you can go over and over the same spot multiple times, and it won't uh, tear a hole in the page. You know, the, the water-based markers, like Crayola markers that everyone grew up with, uh, if you keep going over the same spot too many times, the, the paper itself will start to tear up and you'll, you'll basically color a hole right in your paper. But these alcohol-based markers, for whatever reason, the, the chemical reaction with the paper uh, doesn't do that. You can go over the same spot over and over again and nothing will happen. So that's pretty cool there. And then also what's special about them is that uh, you can blend really well. You know, with, with regular markers, uh, water-based markers, you can't do any blending. But with these, if you have uh, two colors next to each other, um, if you basically take the lighter color, uh, you can kind of uh, basically swirl the colors together. Uh, not too different than if you're using paint and you can blend colors together and get a smooth, smooth transition and a smooth gradient. So that's why I uh, really like them a lot. Um, the one drawback is that uh, once you put color down, you can only go darker, you can't go lighter. It's not like paint where you can uh, paint the highlights last. So with this drawing here, I'm putting in all the highlights in first. You have to put down a base layer of whatever your lightest color is going to be because like I said, you can't go lighter. So once you put a, a dark value down, uh, you're just stuck. So you gotta put in uh, your lightest values uh, first. But after uh, your lightest value is down, then you come in uh, with a shade that's a little bit darker and uh, you know, of course the the marker pack that I have Probably has about a hundred different colors. So there's always at least two or three shades of every single color. So uh, Next you come in with the next darkest shade of the color that you're using for in, in this case It's the orange or the jersey and you basically color in uh, The rest of the areas, but you just leave the highlight untouched uh, you leave the highlight from uh, the first part untouched and just don't color that part in and that's how you uh, achieve highlights and it's a it's a method that I've been using for a couple years like I said and it's working out pretty good um, definitely I'm still playing with it still trying to tweak it and uh, make it better so that's kind of a fun learning process but um, you know I enjoy leaving kind of like a, an, a rim highlight or an edge highlight um, I feel like that kind of adds dramatic effect, especially these serious football players and, and serious poses. So adding that, uh, that edge highlight, I think looks pretty cool. It has a cool effect. Um, but you can just see throughout all the colors, you know, the skin tone, the blue, uh, every color, I'm just coloring in the, the next darkest shade of shadows, wherever that might be on his face, you know, where a lot of the shadows are cast on his arms. Um, just anywhere where there's gonna be a shadow, you just color in with the next darkest layer. And uh, like I said, you can't you can't go lighter, so just pay attention to where you're putting those, and uh, just be very careful as you're putting those down. But that'll help uh, create more depth as you start adding uh, the extra shadow areas. And I do the same thing for the pants, uh, where I color in the the shadows with a gray on the white pants. And as you can see, um, lastly, I have a, a third uh, shadow color, or a third uh, darkness for each color that I put in just for a few shadows, just to sort of make those uh, stand out and pop a little bit more, make the shadows really sink in. And um, that's pretty much it. 
Um, if there's anyone else that you want to see me draw, let me know in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.